Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today we will be painting these flowers and I hope you'll have fun and join in. I did make a sketch and now I will trace it onto watercolor paper. I actually drew it on just a regular printing paper and I usually then trace it onto watercolor paper and using a graphite paper because you know I'm using blocks of paper so I can't really use the window to trace it but if you have a single sheet of paper you can just easily trace it on your window again as always sketch is available for free download from my website and the link you can find down in the description box when finishing tracing my sketch i'm just picking up the graphite from the paper with this kneaded eraser artist eraser i find it perfect for that and when i start to paint that graphite won't flow onto on the surface of my paper and after that i just for some reason my camera stopped so you did miss a little part of it when i was adding naples yellow to my flowers that are in the middle and i did try to paint it from the lower border and not go beneath that but for the upper part i just left left it flow and it, as you could have seen i have actually used a spray bottle to spray some water and just make the water flow but i was trying to keep the lower part of the flower neater and now i was just again sprinkling some paint with naples yellow and the second color is actually mix of quinacridone red maples yellow and scarlet light and i just i like that mix so i did pre-mix it i go i think it goes very well with naples yellow very nice and beautiful rose color so i'm using it for the upper part of my flowers and again afterwards when i've sprinkled it i've I've seen that it's just maybe too much. I picked up with a towel. I will be doing that a couple of times, I think, during my painting process. So when you just see your paint flowing somewhere or going somewhere you don't like, or maybe there are too many puddles or whatever, just use a tissue paper and pick up the paint. As I said earlier, that rose color I'm using for the upper part of the flower, upper part of the, uh, the petals. And I'm just adding it on an upper border and done, then rinsing my brush and smudging it slightly into the petal, leaving the lower part of the petal yellow with, uh, painted with naples yellow and the upper part a little bit rosy and i was doing a couple of layers as you will be able to see during the painting process i did add a little bit more i, I did want those flowers to be very delicate and i did want it to make them somewhat transparent you know i did not want to use a lot of color to paint them so i was just adding single layer and layer and layer to the point where i was satisfied with the color and the saturation of the color because if i've added too much color at once it would probably be too dark and i didn't want that i, I really didn't want this one be quite delicate so i was as i said adding a little bit more layers and usually i did leave layers to dry before i went to my second layer and i did not prevent the petals i was just painting wet on dry because if you prevent your petals the paint will flow more and i actually did not wanted it i, I wanted this time i wanted to control it a little bit more so i've used a wet on dry technique so just keep in mind that layering is actually perfect when you do want different colors, when you do want glazing one color on top of the other color, and especially if you do want to have a little bit more control of the saturation of your color, the vibrancy of your colors, and when layering, always there's just a little bit different, little difference in one layer and another. You will add on some part a little bit more paint and on some part a little bit less paint. And when you add another layer on top, it will just look very beautiful. And those layers should be transparent. They shouldn't be any of them shouldn't be too saturated and too dark because in that case the lower layer doesn't really have make a point right so just make them a little bit transparent and lighter use a little bit more water a little bit less pigment and just build your layers because every single layer will be visible through and then we'll just add a little bit something you know a little bit more interest to your flowers and your painting 
and after the paint completely dry I was then painting the I don't know how this calls those little leaves on the bottom of the of the petals of the flower and I was using first some chromium oxide and then later on some green and olive green also and I've just you should just follow the lines from the sketch I've just made those little lines and then went down and I was trying to make those stems as thin as possible I did want this one to be thin because those flowers were just so delicate the colors were so delicate so I did not want it to paint a thick stem I, I I thought it wouldn't look nice so I just painted those little little thin stems and after that I've added a little bit more of the leaves I, I thought those stems were just asking for some leaves or something like that something like leaves so I was just adding here and there again making some thin lines nothing special and did not really paint any thick leaves but again those thin little lines because you know I guess that made it a little bit more delicate and then just with the olive green emphasized a little bit more that lower part of my flowers and when it all completely dried I left it to dry for a while and when it all completely dried I used this eraser just to erase the pencil lines the graphite lines they were just a little bit too visible for me at the end when I finished they were still visible they are still visible but not that much I didn't want it to make them so so much visible so I've just used that eraser and there is actually the link for that eraser down in the description box I find it to be perfect it doesn't rip the paper but it just erases perfectly and I really do love it so if you're looking for a razor to use that won't rip your paper and, and also won't make those ugly lines you know when you use your eraser you could just smudge your smudge it and leave those ugly lines on your paper this one doesn't and I find it to be just perfect and at the end I did want to add a little bit more of the green in the lower part so I've just stopped in with a larger brush with a lot of water in it some greenery there and with that I'll be finishing off this painting and of course this video thank you guys a lot for watching for all your support I really do appreciate that a lot I I do love to see every single comment of yours so please do comment and tell me what you think about this video and this tutorial if you like it hit the like button I'm not sure if I said that and if you haven't still please subscribe to my channel that would really mean a lot to me and I hope I'll see you next time bye